Welcome to another episode of Behind the Science Rockstar Edition. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. Music with a good beat tends to be bass heavy. Mid-range speakers can't handle deep bass, so you have to bring in the subwoofers to hear and feel the bass. These subwoofers can go all the way down to 20 hertz. In this episode of Behind the Science, we need a scientific tool like a subwoofer in music that can help us go low. This is especially important when we need to quantitate low levels of sugars in a variety of different drinks. I think for this episode, we need to take a field trip and see why this would be important and how it would be applied. So I'm here because we're doing a lot of work at Waters in regards to testing some of the sugars, for example, in fruit juices, beers, wines, and I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the fermentation process. Sure, of course. So um, fermenting is really the heart of beer. That's where we convert the sugars into alcohol. Ah. Yeah. So could you tell me a little bit more, show me how we do that? Definitely, I'd love to show you what I have on my lab table. Great, yeah. let's go. Mm -hmm. Oh Maureen, this looks interesting. What do we have here? So I have a sample of beer that's um, just about finished fermenting, mm -hmm. and I have a brewer's tool called a hydrometer. And uh, this helps us measure the alcohol content. So it basically shows the progression of the wort from being very sugary to being filled with alcohol as the yeast converts the uh, sugars to alcohol. Great, so how does that work? Well, pretty simple. Dunk it in, watch out. <laughs> so we don't cry over spilled beer here, right? Oh, it's all part of the job here. I love it. So as this floats, then this gives us an estimate of um, how much alcohol is in this volume, and we can use that to figure out precise alcohol by volume in the batch of beer we've made. Maureen, thank you so much. That was really interesting. You're welcome. I'm learning a lot today. That's great. Before we dive into these delicious beverages, what I'd like to do is actually invite Dimple, one of our application scientists mm -hmm. here, to kind of explain what we're doing with some of your work at Waters. Sure, thank you, Jennifer. So just like Morain showed, we have another alternate to measure sugars in wine and beer at very low level with QDA. So let me show you on the whiteboard. Great. An alternative to RI and ELS detection is the use of mass detection with electrospray ionization. Mass detection complements traditional detectors used for LC. It offers the opportunity to decrease detection limits and also to obtain mass spectral information on the components in the sample. By combining both chromatographic retention time and mass information, increase the selectivity for the analysis of sugars and sugar alcohols, which can be achieved in a much shorter time. I think we've seen two very great methods for measuring sugars, but I would think that it'd be really hard to use the hydrometer if you were at a big brewery every single time. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one thing that's nice about our unique methods. We're a little more traditional and handcrafted. Well, I think that's a cheers. Cheers. With the increasing incidence of obesity and diabetes across the developed world, interest in monitoring sugar intake has vastly increased in recent years. Profiling the sugar content is a large part of this. And as you saw today, there are many different ways to measure this, where accuracy and product labeling needs to be highly accurate and specific, especially for global distribution, the QDA is a perfect fit. I finally found the scientific version of a subwoofer. For more information on how this can be used on a variety of different samples, check out the application note below for uses with beer, wine, and even fruit juice. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science Rockstar Edition.